metabolism is ideal for losing weight, but what factors determine that speed and what can we do to increase our rate of metabolism? Here with the science are Dr. Elaine Chin and Dr. Elizabeth Goldspain. <laughs> here for a while because one of you was pregnant and had a lovely little baby boy. Uh, we have pictures of baby John right now. Oh, who's right now three months old? He's three months old. Oh, absolutely incredible. Uh, how's the whole experience been, Elizabeth? It's been an absolute joy. The, the, yeah, being a mother, um, there, there's really no words to explain it. You've really got to experience it to... Yeah. to realize. It's been incredible. Well, you're looking incredibly fresh. Well, thank you. Yes. So, uh, baby John sleeps, which is incredible. That would probably even help your metabolism. I don't know. I'm looking for a link. Does it help? Yes, it absolutely does. So, we can start there. Yes. Oh, we can start right there. Um, so, we've all heard about those women who have a very fast metabolism. They're able to burn weight easier. Uh, we just, you know, we're doing our weight loss challenge mm -hmm. and one of the challengers, 28 pounds down in like a month and a half, wow. which is a lot. It is. So what does having a fast metabolism actually mean? And we'll start with you, Elizabeth. Sure. So put simply, it means that you're more efficient at burning calories. Okay. So if two women were to eat the exact same thing and then sit in a chair for an hour afterwards, the one with the quicker metabolism will have burned most of the calories. Yeah. And the, ones with the, the one with the slower metabolism will have actually stored more of those calories as fat. So genetics is one determinant, but there are so many other factors at play, like lifestyle, diet, how much muscle mass you have. Okay, so are there things you can actually do to make your metabolism just work faster? Yeah, so you talked about sleep. So yes. getting enough sleep actually helps your metabolism speed up. Ah, so John so, is helping. Yes. Maybe John is yes. helping. And uh, certainly diet, which Elizabeth will talk about, but I just want to start with activity. So that's, wow. that's I'm sure that you've been covering it, but it's really important now. We know that there's different ways and smarter ways to exercise. So I, I'm to talk about HIT, which is yes. the high intensity interval training. You can burn 30 percent more efficiency than if you just do a steady 30 minutes of jogging on a treadmill. Right. So it helps because it also seems to increase your metabolism even after you've done the exercise. So that's a good, good like good use of your 30 minutes. Okay, so that's key because you want the metabolism to stay fired after you've left the gym. Absolutely. Right? You don't just want it to be going when you're in the gym. Um, let's talk about diet then. Are there foods that we can be eating to optimize our metabolism? Absolutely. And you want to be eating foods that really fire up your metabolic rate. Yeah. So a big one is protein. Protein actually increases your metabolic rate by about 15 to 30 percent oh. compared to carbs, which only speed up your metabolism by about 5 to 10 percent. So there was a study done that showed that people who consume about 30 percent of their calories from protein in their diet yeah. actually consume about 400 fewer calories per day. So the, the impact over time is, is really significant. And then, of course, there's things like avoiding foods that spike your blood sugar levels. So those are all mm -hmm. the good foods, like breads, pastas, right. and the refined <laughs> carbohydrates, right? All the so stuff we love. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. When you say protein, do we care what the protein source is? Do we stay away from animal protein? Do we want animal protein? Do we want more vegetable-based protein? That's do we care? a great question. So actually, all of the proteins are great. So the legumes, the nuts, the seeds for the vegetarians, yeah. the animal proteins for the meat eaters, fish. Yeah. Um, all, all of them are, are fantastic sources okay. for, for speeding up metabolism. Okay, they're all going to boost it. Now, I've also heard that when you eat actually matters. Mm -hmm. Is that true when this it comes to metabolism? New, yeah, there's been a lot of new research on this. Intermittent fasting is, is what it's called. And so there's a lot of science to show that if you eat during the daylight hours, but during a small time window, mm -hmm. so say... Uh, not eating for 16 hours during the day and then only eating during an eight hour window. Mm -hmm. That actually improves your blood sugar levels, um, decreases risk of obesity and diabetes and really helps you to lose weight in a big way. I think in general, just eat more in the morning and then as you get later on in the evening, less yeah. smaller meals. Um, I want to talk about, you already talked about sleep and hormones, right? So try and get how many hours of sleep a night? Seven to eight hours of sleep per night makes a yeah. huge difference. Ideally, uninterrupted sleep. Uninterrupted sleep. Are you doing that? <laughs> Seven to eight hours? No. And can you, test for, can you test for any of this stuff? Can you test to find out about your yeah. metabolism? So genetics is a big factor, so you can do genetics, and you will find out whether you're a high metabolizer or low, and then adjust accordingly. Yeah. And certainly there are hormones like for women, menopause, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, cortisol, insulin, all of these things can be measured by saliva testing. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. All right, that we've got options out there. Thank you so much for the information. Thank Congrats you. again on the baby.